I had the greatest job in the world, and that's working with dogs. Best in show winner is the French Bulldog. Winston won the National Dog Show. It was amazing, it was exciting. And to have a dog to be number one dog in this country, you have to have great nutrition. And I always fed Pro Plan, just like us. When we eat well, we feel good. And I just love that food and what it's done all these years to all the dogs I bred and all the dogs I've shown. Welcome to Pure Dog Talk. I am your host, Laura Reeves. And you know it's the first Monday of the month because my friend Marty Greer is here. And we are going to talk, uh, this is a listener request. We're going to talk about when your female has had a C-section and you breed her again, or is it safe, right? To have the bitch whelp her puppies naturally. Is, is that a safe thing to do? And this was someone who specifically asked this question. So Marty and I talked about it and said, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good deep dive stuff here. So I think we're going to. We're going to hit this one. So welcome, Marty. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. I see you. I, I want people to notice if you're watching the video, Marty's sitting by our pool. I'm a little jealous. That's all. So, <laughs> okay. Look at that. YouTube cool. listeners get to see the pool at Marty's house. Nice. Yep. yep. Okay. It's a real pool. It it's is a real, real pool. pool. In it's the like ground a lap pool. pool. Yes. It's the thing. So talk to us, Marty, about, you know, I've got this female, for whatever reason, she had a C-section. Maybe it was a singleton, maybe it was whatever. And I've bred her again. Now, what are some of my concerns? What are my, it's okay. Talk to me about that. Sure. And I think the most important thing to ask is why did you have a C-section in the first place? Mm -hmm. If you had a C-section in the first place because she's a Bernese Mountain Dog, or because she's a bulldog or a Frenchie, or maybe a clumber, or maybe a corgi. Mm -hmm. Some of the breeds that are more commonly um, having their puppies by C-section, you you still have a clumber or a bulldog or a Frenchie or a corgi or a burner. Um, mm -hmm. They didn't change breeds while they were pregnant. So that's the most important reason. Secondly, what were the other reasons? Did she just have too many puppies? If she had 14 and she's gonna have eight this time, yeah, that's a whole different conversation. If she had a puppy that was oversized or misdirected, that's a different conversation. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, it's going to depend on what happened. So you really need to have a good history on what went on. And when the C-section, the last C-section was done, I always try to make medical notes and I would hope that a lot of veterinarians do, but not necessarily, especially at the referral centers for what the initiating cause was. So if the cause was a puppy was coming down the uterine horn and instead of coming out the cervix, it turned north and went up into the other horn. And so it's crosswise in the horn, then yeah, you're probably not going to need a C-section again because the chances of that happening again are pretty slim. If she had one or two puppies last time and she's having one or two puppies again, you're probably going to need a C-section. So it really depends highly mm -hmm. on what the underlying cause was. So at the time of the C-section, instead of having, you know, tears and having hysteria over it, try to speak reasonably and logically with the veterinarian and say, was there an underlying reason that you could determine? Sometimes we can't. I mean, there's times I've done a C-section. I'm like, I have no flipping idea what to tell you because everything li looked lined up. Everything looked fine. She had good ut uterine tone. Her blood work was normal. Everything looked fine. I can't explain this to you. Mm. But Statistically, according to the numbers, 75% of the time the p bitch has a C-section because of a bitch cause and 25% are a puppy cause. So that kind of gives you some numbers to work with is three quarters of the time you're probably going to need another C-section, but a quarter of the time it was an anasarca puppy, it was a misdirected puppy, it was oversized, it had mm -hmm. some other kind of a birth defect, two mm -hmm. were coming at the same time, um, so you had a log jam. I mean, you know, you just have to try and sort out. There were twins, and, and I've seen in my career two sets of twins. They are incredibly rare in the bitch, wow. incredibly rare. So, you, you know, you kind of have to ask the questions of what mm -hmm. the initiating cause was and be nice about it. You know, don't go to the veterinarian and say, wow, blah, blah, blah. you know, don't, don't lay into them. Find out what you can, especially if you're at a clinic that isn't your familiar location mm -hmm. so that you do have a relationship that helps you to understand what you need to do going forward. But what, what I'm hearing you say and what I have understood and have experienced um, in my personal situations, just simply the fact that the, the bitch experienced a C-section was, her uterus was open and then sewn back shut again. 
that is not going to prevent her from being able to carry a, a, a litter to term or to look free wealth them. At the Correct. Abortion. Correct. And that's that's the general thought. It's VBAC and the, on the human side, it's veter, veter, la, vaginal birth after C-section, VBAC. So most of the time you absolutely can go ahead. There's no, from a safety perspective, reason to believe that it's going to be unsafe. You assume that the veterinarian did a nice job closing the uterus. Um, what I always kind of laugh about is when the veterinarians say, oh, the uterus was paper thin when I did her C-section. You can never have another litter. Okay, you take a uterus and you put 14 puppies in it and you stretch it out like a pair of old pantyhose and you wonder why it's paper thin. It's supposed to be thin. That's the way your stomach looks after Thanksgiving dinner. That's the way your bladder looks when you need to go to the restroom. That's the way the organ works is it stretches out and it becomes thinner. But that doesn't mean that it's so thin that she can't have a normal pregnancy and a normal vaginal birth. Okay, good. And so let's talk a little bit. You were talking, you mentioned earlier that you had um, encountered a lot of different difficulties of, you know, um, complications after C-sections. So let's talk about some of those and how those may or may not actually impact whether the bitch is, is going to be in a good place to have another litter or to free wealth it. Well, I'm not sure quite what where you're going with this. So well, you were talking I'm... about the um, the uh, vet that missed a puppy, for example. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. This kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, today I was reading on Facebook. You know, I try not to read Facebook very often because it makes my hair on fire. Um, mm -hmm. There's at least one bitch a month somewhere in the United States that has had a C-section and the veterinarian has left a puppy behind at the c-section and it's almost hard to imagine but it happens so frequently that the american vet med association professional liability insurance trust in other words our malpractice insurance for veterinarians put together a newsletter last spring about hey take out all the puppies oh and by the way hey don't do a c-section before the puppies are at full term so when you have to start saying things like that and literally the avma professional liability insurance trust went so far as to say maybe you should take an x-ray after the c-section to make sure you got the puppies all out um that set all the people who do theriogenology on their ear mm. um you, yes you do take an x-ray after you do uh bladder surgery because bladder stones are itty bitty teeny weeny and they can be down in the neck of the bladder puppies are not that itty bitty teeny weeny they're pretty obvious you need to go all the way to both ends of the uterus and make sure that you've got your fingers on the ovaries and then I will put my finger down to the cervix if it's closed, through the cervix if it's open. And if it's an open cervix, in other words, the cervix already open up, she maybe mm -hmm. has had a puppy before the C-section, mm -hmm. may not have. I will meet my technician with a gloved finger in the cervix to make sure, or in the vaginal vault, to make sure mm -hmm. that she touches my finger and I know there isn't any way that there could be a puppy between me and there. I almost left a puppy one time because of the bitch being in a bitch fight three or four days prior to the labor. Um, and you know how bitches are. Mm. They don't fight fair. Um, mm. Dogs, male dogs fight fair. Bitches, not so much. She was bitten on the vulva, had this huge amount of swelling, abscess, cellulitis around her vulva. And so a puppy was stuck there. And so I did the C-section because there wasn't enough stretch to the vulva for puppies mm. to come out. Did the C-section. And as I was getting ready to close, reached down and realized that there was a puppy that was still caught there. So it's really important that that gets done. Um, so I, I don't know if that answers your question. Or right. If you so to I, some of the or... things that I think about that I've personally experienced that I wonder about, um, a torsioned uterine horn. Is that mm. something that I, I've now encountered it twice in, right. in 40 years. So yay right. me. Um, is that something that's likely to occur again? What's, what's the reality on that? No, that's usually just bad luck. It's usually that the bitch probably laid down on one side, rolled over, she had a heavy uterine horn. Maybe the puppies weren't evenly distributed in the right and the left horn, so there might have been a heavier horn than the other. And when she got back up, she rolled over to the other side and it just sort of flipped. Mm -hmm. So again, it's like if you take a bread bag and twist mm -hmm. it, um, you try and keep 
you know, the air out so that your bread stays fresh. The same thing can happen to the uterus. It can have a twist in it. And then there isn't enough stretch and capacity for the puppy to come through there. So that's one of the things that if that was the cause of the C-section in the first place, mm -hmm. it's very unlikely to happen again. That's just bad luck. It's just an unfortunate set of circumstances. An right. Anasarca puppy, not common to see that more than once. Describe um, for people are, what that is. Yeah, that's a walrus puppy. Anasarca is the term for it, but they're, they're call them walrus puppies. That's usually a placental defect that causes the puppy to become edematous and oversized, more commonly seen in some breeds than others. Bulldogs, clumbers, some of the breeds Clumbers. that are more commonly, yeah, more commonly affected. Usually there's only one in the litter, but it's enough that it's so big that anybody behind it, it's not going to pass and anybody behind it not, is not going to. And you really can't tell that. If you take an x-ray, you're not going to be able to assess that. Ultrasound, maybe you can see the extra edema, probably not. So it's one of those unfortunate things. We've seen puppies born without a uh, full skull and brain. Mm -hmm. um, those puppies will sometimes have dystocias. So the abnormal puppies are more likely to cause a dystocia than a normal litter. Um, so, so just so you know, and after a certain period of time, if the bitch hasn't delivered all the puppies and the uterine fluid is gone and her uterus is just exhausted and some other things are going on, you're mm -hmm. probably going to end up with a C-section. After the fluid is gone, those puppies like Velcro into the uterine mm -hmm. lining. Mm -hmm. So you get two, three days out after the last puppy was born and there's still one retained. The chances of her successfully delivering that puppy and still having a healthy uterus and being safe is pretty small. So most of the time, those are salvage C-sections, knowing that you're going in to find a dead puppy, but you've got to get the puppy out so that the bitch has normal health. Because if you leave a dead puppy in there, the outcomes are, they're very unpleasant. I've had uh, several of those that we've seen, and they're, they're very unfortunate outcomes. So don't, don't, don't just wait it out. No, please don't, don't do wait. that. No. Um, you can Bad. you you'll risk your bitch's life. So mm -hmm. yeah, when they come in with a temp of 106 and a you know ruptured uterus, it's yeah, it's not good. Um. Okay, another one. So I always love bouncing off all of the Auntie Laura's medical mysteries off of Marty for the <laughs> for the general edification of our audience <laughs> because they're so profoundly numbered. <laughs> well, um, if you do anything long enough, you're, you're gonna oh find yeah. Those. That's Something. valid. Um, placentas that don't detach. That was my very okay. first, my foundation bitch had two C-sections. The first C-section, I had no idea why she couldn't have these puppies. The primary um, veterinarian I'd been going to happened to be on vacation that night. And her just barely out of college, not very experienced assistant did the C-section and didn't tell me or didn't notice this. And so I rebred her not knowing that I had this and she had to have another C-section and the vet who did that C-section more experienced said, yeah, so here's this problem. And they had to suture the uterine lining. And it explained to me why she almost bled out with the first litter because probably that didn't happen. So talk to us about how common that is. It's the only time it ever happened to me, but that was, that was an eye opener. Yeah, it's not particularly common. Most placentas will detach nicely when the bitch is at full term, so that's usually not much of a problem. But it, you know, it it certainly can occur. And the other thing that I had happened my first year out of school was there was another veterinarian working with me, and he did a C-section, came out of surgery, and said, "So I didn't pull the placentas off the uterine lining, and then I sutured it up, and I think I sutured a placenta into the incision." Do you think that's a problem? I was like, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm like a baby veterinarian. I'm 24. I don't, I don't know a lot. Thinking but, that's yeah, a problem. That's, that <laughs> sounds bad. So yeah, don't do that. Um, so I usually am able to successfully detach the placentas. Now there are some bitches that bleed heavily after a C-section. Mm -hmm. So there's a few things that you can do. <clears throat> we give a lot of injectable calcium mm -hmm. that helps with uterine contractility. The uh, mm -hmm. oxytocin works better with calcium on board. So you can give it subcutaneously, make sure it's 10% um, so that you don't end up with um, too much of a problem because if you give the 23%, that can cause basically a chemical burn and a skin slough. Mm. Um, you can inject or drip oxytocin directly onto the uterus. I have injected it directly into the uterus, oh, wow. into the blood vessels or into the muscle, and then you get a, a fast or more local effect than if you're giving it intravenously. But in our C-sections, as soon as I place the last suture and tie the last knot in the uterine incision, then I will start giving oxytocin. I don't do it until I place the last incision because the uterus contracts down noticeably 
with that injection and I don't want it to contract down while I'm suturing it, make me believe that I've got a tight incision line, then as the oxytocin wears off, have it relax and open and leave a gap in the incision. So I'm pretty particular about that. Um, so those are some things you can do. If you have really significant uterine bleeding, you can use some of the um, gel products that are made to be sterile to go into an abdomen. If the veterinarian has those in inventory, they can pull them out and you can actually put that in the uterus to help with uterine contractions and uterine um, blood clotting. Uh, and all of my bitches, when I do a C-section, every bitch I do a C-section on has a protime and a PTT, which checks the blood clotting and a platelet count mm -hmm. to make sure that they have adequate blood clotting before we go to surgery, because mm -hmm. there are some reasons for concern, especially the sight hounds. They have a problem with blood clotting after the procedure that it um, they break down their clots more quickly than other breeds. So there's actually mm -hmm. a drug that you can give to combat that. So if you're planning a sight hound C-section, you may want to have your veterinarian have that drug in inventory because it's not a drug that's normally just sitting around on the shelf at a vet clinic. It would have to be ordered in advance. So obviously, if you have an emergency C-section, you don't know that. But if you're planning mm -hmm. one, you may want to look into those things. So those, mm -hmm. are, those are some things that I would consider. It's really unusual to have to do a transfusion as long as you don't spay the bitch. Do not spay at C-section. Do not spay at C-section. Do not spay at C-section. Again, I can and speak to this. <laughs> if I didn't mention, don't spay at C-section. Please don't. <clears throat> True Panion is revolutionizing medical insurance for pets by providing the best possible experience to our members. And it's not some space age dream. It's happening now. We pay your veterinarian directly while you're checking out, and we're the only ones who can, which means you have decisions in seconds, and you don't have to wait for reimbursement. So unlike with other providers, you'll keep more money in your pocket. Ask your veterinarian if True Panion can pay them directly, because there's pet insurance, and then there's True Panion. I almost lost, um, like, my most famous bitch because... She had a torsion uterine <laughs> and so she had to have a c-section and i said you know we'd had she'd had all kinds of problems and i said just fine just be done with it let's just spare her while we're here and we almost lost her she almost bled out and um you can speak to why that is but the part that was weird i guess interesting funny auntie laura's medical mysteries she came in season till the day she died without a uterus because apparently Missed a tiny little bit of ovary somewhere in the frantic yeah. rush to try and save her life. So yeah. speak to us That's about so bad. <laughs> why we don't, yes, why we don't do that. Spay at C-section. Um, I wrote a five-page article that I ended up putting on Facebook, and every now and then it resurfaces. So I suspect after today's episode, <laughs> you can go it'll Google resurface. It. <laughs> yeah, you can find it again on Facebook. Basically, the concerns are twofold. One is that they lose approximately 30% of their blood volume if you take the uterus out. I had one client that said, oh, but my vet uses laser. Okay, it's not the drop of blood that you lose when you take the uterus and um, detach it from the um, ovary, ovarian ligament. It's the gallon of blood that's circulating in this distended, vascular, very important organ that the bitch has to contend with. So you will lose up to 30% of her blood volume if you take that uterus out and throw it in the trash. You don't have any way to replace that. You don't have blood. You know, veterinarians aren't like human hospitals where they just go to the blood bank, open the fridge, and bring out three units of blood. We don't have mm -hmm. that option in most clinics. Uh, some of the referral centers will, but, you know, it's, it's expensive. It's complicated. So that's number one. Number two is that the blood vessels to the ovaries and the uterus are much enlarged, much engorged because of the pregnancy. So it's a lot easier for a suture not to hold tightly and have it slip off. I've had a client that had that happen when her bitch was spayed at a referral center. She came off the table, went home, got out of the car, and blood was pouring out of her abdominal incision. So <clears throat> don't do that. Just <clears throat> don't do it. Um, and don't let your vet try to talk you into it. Try not to let the emergency clinic do it. Some, Unfortunately, some emergency clinics, and I don't want to badmouth anybody, but it's reality, <laughs> is some of them will hold you hostage and they won't allow you to have a C-section unless you say, go ahead and spare. Um, if you absolutely positively know you never want another litter out of this bitch, and you're concerned that you don't have the money, you can't afford to do another C-section, you can't afford to spay her or neuter the male dog that lives in your household, you can have them do a tubal ligation so that they just basically tie her tubes. Mm. That won't keep her from coming into heat. It won't prevent a pyometra, 
but it will spare you an accidental breeding if that's what your biggest, biggest concern is. And the oviducts are really prominent and easy to find at C-section. So it's unusual for us to do that. I would never do it without an owner consent, but even though my staff is like, oh my God, like really just tie your tubes so that this never happens to these people again. You know, we're not allowed to be the breeding police as veterinarians. And unfortunately, yep. some of them think that they are. Some of them so think they are. <laughs> I'm just saying, um, you can ask for a tubal ligation. It's not hard to do. The veterinarian may say, I've never done that before because they probably have never been asked it, but you can, and it's relatively simple. But do not spay at C-section because it's just way too risky. I had a client that had a, her dog was with her daughter out on the West Coast, and they took the bitch to C-section, said, we're going to lose her if we don't spay her. I said, you're going to lose her if you do spay her. Well, they almost did. Um, they did spay her. They almost lost her because of the C-section and the spay down there at that. So please don't do that. Please, 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 please. And if you're really curious, we'll put the article up on Laura. We'll, yeah, we'll find it. Laura's we'll have it in the show talks. notes. Yeah, we <laughs> we'll will. have it in the show notes. Marty can send so, me a, a link, man. Yeah, um, and feel uh, free to repost it. You know, post it oh, to yeah. everyone you know. Post Absolutely. it everywhere. Put my name on it so that I get credit for it because I obviously need to have my name on it so that I have some, uh, you have some credibility. You can't just like put yeah. your name on it if yeah. you're not a veterinarian. Um, but please, please, please don't hesitate to put it out there because it's the better educated people are, whether they're owners or veterinarians, the the more likely they are to have good outcomes. Excellent. Okay, so in the... Um pantheon of things that actually can be a problem with a c-section and then breeding the bitch the next time so we're saying not a problem if it was just a a thing bad with the puppy um and and she can free well per next litter not a problem not an, an issue with the uterus not gonna have an extra big contraction and pop her uterus open like that's not gonna happen so what are some of the things that are a problem if you've had a bitch that had a C-section, like my bitch whose who's placentas didn't detach. I, I, if I had done that, I wouldn't have brought her again. So what are some of the other things? About About if back? your bitch has had a C-section, what, what would cause you then to not continue breeding that bitch or to have that bitch bred again? Nothing you can think of. Well, if she's a bitch that chronically has one or two puppies and she should have 10, Mm -hmm. I'd probably say her, her days in the gene pool are numbered mm -hmm. because you need to have, I, and I've had that happen to one of my bitches. Mm -hmm. She had two singletons and I'm like, you know what? I'm not keeping you. I'm not keeping a puppy out of you. I want better fertility than that. And we don't really know how much fertility, how much of that is genetic and how much of it is not. So that would lead me to say I didn't want to do another breeding. Um, mm -hmm. If she had two litters of 16 puppies, hey, go for it. Done. Like, do a C-section. Because... <laughs> Because you got 32 puppies out of her. Like, that's pretty amazing. So, you know, yeah. she's a great brood bitch and so are her puppies. So please breed her again. Um, so really, that's probably the main thing that I would say. Um, okay. Or if she produced the same defect in a puppy, if she had, you know, two puppies with just really bizarre defects that shouldn't happen frequently, then I would say, yeah, you're probably done. Right. And so those are those are the only things that stand out to you. Yeah. Yeah, really, because most things are, are one and done. Very few are going to be a problem. Um, and, and most bitches, when you do the C-section, and of course you can't tell when you free whelp a bitch, but most bitches, when they have a C-section, they should have a fairly even number of puppies in each horn. So right. if they have 14 puppies, they should have like seven and seven or six and eight. They mm -hmm. shouldn't have 13 and one. Yeah. So if there is something like 13 and one or something really bizarre, that there's something unusual and it's the same uterine horn twice. I've had it happen in opposite horns. If it's the same uterine horn twice, I'd say, you know, there's something just not right about this bitch's reproductive system. So maybe it's time to say I'm done. But it, it's really almost all of these are just one offs when they're yeah. a, just a random thing that happens. So here's another one from Auntie Laura's medical mystery file. It's big, it's fat. <laughs> Um, vaginal strictures and also, um, cervical and, and like one horn, the puppies come fine. The other pu horn, the puppies don't come fine. Speak to me about this. This is fascinating to me. Yeah, there are some anatomical things that can happen. Um, we had a bitch many years ago that we did a C-section on, uh, because she had, um, uh, one puppy 
in her uterus and one horn was normal and the other horn was a blind ended pouch. So that's an a segma a a a segmental uterine uh, a, a you know problem so that the uterus did just didn't continue all the way down. She had an ovary, she had a uterine horn, she had a pyometra in that horn, and then the horn was blind ended and didn't come down to the cervix. Wow. So that can happen. Those are rare. Um, there are sometimes strictures. Vaginal strictures are pretty common. Yeah. So you need to have your bitch tested or checked. Mm -hmm. There's really not mm -hmm. a test, but it's a vaginal exam done by your veterinarian or by you if you feel comfortable and competent that before you put semen in, you should reach in and see if there's any kind of structural abnormality that you can feel. Now, there can be abnormalities higher up in the horn than what your fingers can reach. So right. you can't guarantee that there's not a stricture. But if you know that there's a vaginal stricture or a vaginal septum, which is like a column of tissue that goes top to bottom, sometimes those can be popped or resected prior to the breeding. Sometimes they're circumferential and you really can't do anything to fix them. And so if you know they're there, you just plan a C-section. Yes. Don't yeah. wait until you're at you know at four in the morning and need an episiotomy. And I don't recommend that you do an episiotomy at home no. with a do-it-yourself at home pair of scissor kit. Um, yeah, no. So <laughs> I have I have had one case where we bred a bitch knowing she had the need for a vaginal episiotomy before she went into labor. So the client had her bred anyway, brought her in, we did an episiotomy sent her home to free whelp, had her come back and sutured it up. That is a really unusual client Yeah, that would want to do that. Yeah. Um, but we've, we've seen, I just went with columns. the C-section myself. Yeah. yeah, really, seriously, just do it. Um, I've seen vaginal, vaginal columns. Like there's a, a band of tissue that goes H -band top we, to bottom. Was yeah, how I was like, it. yeah. Like, yeah. you know, like this, an inch wide and a half an inch This bitch that I'm talking about when my first repro vet in Nebraska first examined her, she's like, I could pick her up, like yeah. physically lift her off the ground because yeah. of the um, thickness of this. Yeah. That was also the same bitch that I could never get bred, could never get bred, could never get bred. Finally took her in to start her progesterone testing the first day I saw blood and she had ovulated that day. Yeah, there are there are those that do that. But oh, yeah. yeah, I had a bitch that was like that too. And we were actually doing a TCI breeding with frozen semen on her on Easter Sunday awesome. with my husband, myself, and the owner in the building. And I said, she's got this big vaginal column of tissue. And she said, well, can't you just transect it? I'm like, on Easter Sunday with no staff. No, no. no. I don't I'm have go a way no. to anesthetize her and manage her safely. No, I'll put in the semen. You'll come back for a C-section. I'm not going to do anything heroic and daring on Easter Sunday with three people in the building, one of which is the owner, yeah. who was not going to be all that helpful. So, you know, there's just times that you have to know what your limits are and that's okay. Knowing your fine. limitations are fine. If you have a vaginal stricture, if it's a little tiny septum and you can reach in and pop mm -hmm. it, sometimes the bitch will go eh, while you do it, it, it's not a big deal. And I think Great, you got it over frequently with. those are, that kind of thing happens when you have a, a natural breeding and, you know, you've got you that bitch know. that the first breeding and she screams like she's dying and have those too. So, <laughs> That's right. And you may not even know that that's what went on. That the, no. the male breeding her would have ruptured the septum and she mm -hmm. had a, a moment of drama, mm -hmm. but it doesn't bleed much. It's not a big mm -hmm. deal, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, you but can But it can, can prevent those. a live cover. Like, oh, I sure. mean, that, that particular bitch, I, there was no way I was getting a live cover on her. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, she was, she was a one and done. Honestly, I, I needed the pedigree to come forward, but that's about it. So she, yeah. she had yeah. one really fabulous litter and we walked on. Yeah. And you've got to know your limits. Yep. If it's too much, it's simply too much. So just don't do it. Yep. I think that just that's don't. an important one. If it's too much, don't do it. Yeah. There's other dogs out there. You can, you know, you can always go there. So yep. yeah, be, be aware of what your limits are and know what your options for, C-section for, you know, interventions, if you have a problem, mm -hmm. are before you breed yeah. so that you've arranged for a planned C-section. And I don't want to say that everybody should plan a C-section, but I want you to think it through so that you have a plan in place. And don't wait until 15 minutes before your vet clinic closes or 15 minutes after they close to decide that you're in trouble. Yeah. So plan ahead you know, really be thoughtful about it. I know people are afraid to breed and they're almost afraid to breed without having the option of having a veterinary clinic to do a C-section for them. That shouldn't be 
enough to put you off, but it should be enough to make you make good decisions. So right. think it through and be smart about it. Yep. All right. Marty, thank you very much. It is time for your pool time. So I'm going to get <laughs> <laughs> yes, let it you is. off the off the camera here and you go have a great swim. And I sure appreciate your time joining us tonight. Of course, as always.